What's going on Yu-Gi-Oh! community? YG Palette back here with another Locals vlog video. I know it's been a while since I did one and today I am extremely excited because not only do we have two tournaments to attend to today, but because I changed my deck up dramatic dramatically, drastically. Yeah, I can't even talk today. I'm just like so happy. I changed the deck up quite a lot last night. I did add like Elemental Hero Solid Soldier and I also am going to be adding Sales Band who I picked up some from my buddy. So I'm going to actually go over to Locals and pick them up. And I am going to be adding Verte Anaconda into the extra deck. Now, uh, these changes, I decided, you know what? Everyone's playing Verte Anaconda. I was like, you know, I better just go on and jump jump uh what do you call it jump on the bandwagon and just play verte and Dakota in my hero decks and uh, i think i think we're gonna do pretty good with that so i figure you know i'm gonna be using it for branded anyway so might as well get it and uh what is it solid soldier is probably gonna facilitate more to that verte and Dakota place and the sales ban definitely gonna be using that for something like calling nabiru because i don't main deck nabiru maybe ash blossom or artifact scythe things that i would need to use during situations like that so that's why i decided to put it in the main deck and uh i just gotta go pick them up so it's gonna be it's gonna be a good day and uh last week uh, i didn't do a video last week because I, I explained it in my last video that um you know the footage just wasn't that good and i didn't record the last two matches so hopefully today i'll be able to record the entire matches of uh tournament one and like i said also that this is going to be two separate videos so we're not going to be recording this video is going to be for the first tournament that's in the morning and then the next video is going to be for the other tournament at 11 at 3 30. so um yeah, uh, definitely uh, be on the lookout. It's going to be two different videos, so this one's not going to be as long. Uh, it, will, it will probably be a little bit long, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see. We'll probably have to wait until the cutting room floor. But anyways, I am excited. We're going to go to Locals today, and we're going to go uh, play. Hopefully, we see some new players, and hopefully, we do well with this deck because uh, I haven't actually tested it yet. So that, that's me, though. I, I never test decks, actually. Testing is actually when I go into the actual tournament and just play. You know, Anybody else like that? Anybody else like me that just does that? I don't play online or anything. I just build a deck and just take it to locals and just good luck you know and uh yeah so uh enough of that let's uh head on to locals how you doing buddy doing good doing good you still playing cool yeah i'm still playing cool right now damn it i'm just kidding let's get you some dollars but i'm gonna say the best guy man jumping right here good so for round one we go against our buddy destin and my favorite deck, Luandries. I'm pretty sure you guys know how this matchup goes. So my opponent uh, makes me go first, or I, I think I get the first one, uh, but I draw a dead hand. Like I drew nothing but bricks and it was just, it was horrible. So all I could do was literally set a Shadow Mist and I think I set an Infinite Impermanence face down. Um, and then that was it, that was all I could do. My opponent goes and he just goes off, he pops off and he was just able to set up a really good board and basically ends off his board with an M pin and the barrier statue of the storm winds. And um, he attacks into my monster. And because Shadow Missile sent to the graveyard, I use the effect to search out my Elemental of Stratos because with that barrier statue, I figure might as well get my wind monsters into my hand. And then uh, my opponent just attacks me um, and then uh, just proceeds to pass from there. And when it became my turn, I drew the Solid Soldier, so I was able to summon out Solid Soldier, use its effect to special summon my Elder Source Stratos because it is a win monster, so I would not be affected by that barrier statue. I summon it, but um, during it wouldn't really matter because my opponent would set up his cards to be able to summon out Raza the Mega Monarch and just basically bounces my uh, Solid Soldier and my E-Call from my graveyard to the top of my deck. And because my Stratos had to be summoned in defense position to get its search effect, I had absolutely no battle phase. So, um, and just from there, my opponent was just able to just go off, attack me directly. I did uh, absolutely nothing. And uh, that was just a very bad hand. And I think I had sales ban in my hand. I finally did get those sales bans from my friends and uh, they didn't really help out in this situation. And I'm thinking about actually side decking those, like when I look back and forth with it, but I was kind of like, I wanted to run it, but that's not important here. But so I made my opponent go first and I actually got it wrong. I didn't have any Lancias in my hand like I thought I did, but it was just another brick hand. And I was just like, oh my goodness, I'm going to lose here. I made my opponent go first because I sided in like Dark Ruler no more and the Lancias. And uh, he goes off. He goes off with his usual combos with the Fu Wanderers deck. And when it became my turn, I just said three bluffs and just like passed at that point. One of them was Summon Limit, and that actually did come in handy a little bit. When it became his turn, he normal summoned out one of the Flu Wanderers, and then he 
use the effect, do that additional normal summoning, and then he used that effect. And then from there, I chained out my summon limit so he couldn't summon out his other monster. And uh, yeah, I just uh, proceeded to take all the damage. And then it was just like from that point, I was like, yeah, he, he's got this. And my hand was just horrible. I had a malicious miracle fusion. I believe I have fusion destiny, but I could not play it because of the barrier statue. Then I had the summon limit. I don't remember what the other cards were, but it was just a very bad start <laughs> to the tournament. I just have a very bad matchup against Blue Wanderers, and I'm trying to learn how to navigate around that deck. It's just very difficult to do it, especially with the card pool that I have right now. So I want to try to get some Ghost Ogres, and I hear that helps, especially against the Field Spell. So I kind of want to add in maybe the Ghost Ogres into the main deck. I'm not entirely sure. I just got to figure out how to navigate around that deck and just like hope for the best uh, next time, you know? So that was uh, game, that was round one, and I got the loss, so I am 0-1, uh, and... Uh, Nothing really much to say about that one. I just do not like Fool of Wonders. I gotta, uh, I gotta get stronger with that against that archetype. So, what can you do, you know? But before we get into round two, I want to take this time to say a little bit of announcements that happened uh, during this tournament. Uh, for one, uh, I want to give some special thank yous to my friends, uh, Aaron, who got me two sales bands, and my boy Taylor, who got me the birthday anaconda. And a special thank you to our man, uh, Leo, who works at Paladin's Game Castle. He gave me sales band, uh, and I just... 100% appreciate you, man. If you happen to be watching this video, thank you so very much. And another thing is that this was an actually back to dual tournament. I was not aware of this. So this is actually with a game mat on the line here. I'm, not, I'm already off to a bad start, but um, it is a back to dual. And I'll be showing you guys the uh, little like um, prizing, uh, the prizes that are handed out later in the video. So uh, do expect that to be shown a little bit later. Round two, my opponent goes first and he sets two cards face down and passes round from here. I have absolutely no idea what this person is playing. He's a uh, newer person I haven't seen before. So I actually had to be like kind of cautious here, but I was able to draw a bunch of cards that make me combo off. So I was just like comboing off with my deck. I was summoning out the DPE. I even summoned out the Malicious Bane. And I believe I also summoned out the uh, Dystopia or I summoned out something. Uh, no, I didn't actually, I didn't activate Fusion Destiny. I think I hard polymerization or something like that. And um, I think I had Sunrise on my field or something. And uh, I just went in to attack and I just threw one of his cards, uh, his face down cards. Yeah, I had nothing to use. So from there, I was just able to get the win. And I have absolutely no idea what this guy is playing. So I didn't even know how to side in for game two. So I didn't really side in. I just kind of went with it. You know, I was like, let's just go uh, game two. I have no idea what he's playing. And um, I think I actually might have sided in um, Twin Twisters. I might have sided in Twin Twisters. Now, for game two, my opponent sets three and a monster in defense position. I'm like, okay, uh, more back row. So I draw, and the only thing I had was actually Shadow Mist. I think I had like two Super Polymerizations in my hand. So I summon up Shadow Mist and I just go for the attack. Turns out he's playing Elemental Heroes and he has the Solid Soldier. So I take the 100 points of damage, but thankfully I have Super Polymerization. I activate that and I fuse the two monsters, two hero monsters with different attributes, go into Sunrise, use its effect to get my Miracle Fusion, and then I just attack directly with the Sunrise. And um, that was actually very helpful. And Super Polymerization is finally putting in some work. I put it into the deck, not knowing if it was going to help or not. In this situation, it did help. So that was actually pretty cool. Now my opponent goes, I believe he sets one and a monster in defense and passes. Now I go and I believe I summon out quite a few hero monsters as well. And to the point where during, uh, when I'm just going into the battle phase, I destroy his monster. He activates a hero signal and he summons out Shadow Mist from his uh, deck. And because Shadow Mist was special summoned, he can to search a mass change card. I believe he searches mass change two. And then from there, he proceeds to activate mass change. However, I have my super polymerization number two in my hand. So I activated super polymerization, discarded a card to fuse my hero that already attacked and his shadow miss. And I went into my elemental hero Esgranado. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I'm saying that name correctly. And I go into that and I just proceeded to attack directly and just uh, got the win and uh, I got it. So that was actually really cool. Super polymerization came in very handy during this, this uh, round and I really liked it. It was really cool. And I'm actually glad I decided to put it in the main deck. And a uh, thing I actually did use was Salesman to call Nibiru just in case because I was definitely going to more than five summonings. Uh, this was during game one, I activated Salesman, so at least I got to use it. 
And uh, yeah, that was uh, really cool. Uh, my opponent uh, didn't really have uh, good cards in his hand. At least I don't think he did because all he had was the hero signal and the monsters he kept setting. So he just wasn't able to go off uh, like, you know, having uh, very good setup boards, you know what I mean? But uh, he did his best, so that was actually really cool. And uh, it was really cool just seeing another hero player um, over there at local. So really cool. And I was just uh, so happy the Super Polarizations came in clutch uh, during uh, round two. <laughs> For round three, we go against a pile deck, and I believe that's what it's called when they use the Brave Token, the DPE, the Artifact Engine, as well as some Phantom Knight cards or any level three uh, spam monsters. So we'll call it the pile deck. If that's not the right, uh, my bad. I, I don't know what it's called. But my opponent goes first, and he's just setting up his board. It's the usual setups, and it just has the DPE, the Verte Anaconda, the uh, I'm sorry, the Dagda. Uh, after um, you do some stuff, and uh, he has the site set on his back row, so he was able to destroy that with DPE to summon out during my turn, and I cannot summon out from the extra deck. Yeah, I think Scythe really does need to get banned, but uh, it was just, uh, it was it was, it was was bad. It was bad for me, and all I could do was summon out uh, my Vision Hero Ferris. I did have set a Super Polymerization, and I believe I set another monster. I don't remember which one I did set, but then when it became his turn, he drew, and then uh, I used Super Polymerization during his turn, so I was able to fuse off his Destiny Hero uh, DPE with my uh, Ferris to go into the Destiny Hero Dangerous, just to get rid of that DPE. But it's not gonna amount to much at whatsoever because my opponent just goes off. He's able just to set up some more boards. Uh, he gets rid of some cards and then he even like summons out the uh, Nightmare Unicorn. So he was able just to bounce my cards. And that was just like, from there I was like, yeah, you know what, let's just go to game two because there's no way I'm gonna survive any of this. And my hand was just not that good from that point. And it was uh, it was also my part because I did not use the Ferris's effect earlier to set up my increase from the deck to the Spell and Trap zone. I messed up on that and that kind of cost me greatly because I could have summoned it during my opponent's turn and just summoned out Vision Hero Vion for my deck as well. I probably could have done something, but yeah, I just messed up and that was definitely on me <laughs> for uh, game one. So it's game two. I decided to go first because I'd rather set up a board and before my opponent does. So let's see if I can have something here. I don't really end up with a two too much, but I, cause I didn't want to overextend too much as well. So I summon out the Elements Hero Sunriser. I do have a Cross Crusader and I also have my own uh, DPE on the field. <laughs> and I uh, just set one card and pass. So it became my opponent's turn. He goes off a little bit. He summons out his Cherubini. He was able to uh, have some uh, the Water Temple already in his hand. So he was ready to, uh, he summoned it. I believe he also summoned out another monster going to the Cherubini. But um, yeah, my opponent just sends off the uh, Torrent Scales from his deck to the Graver with Cherubini. And he just, um, he, he kind of disrupts my board. Uh, that's actually what, what does really happen. Especially when he goes into the whole uh, Access Code Talker. Uh, <laughs> he goes to the Access Code Talker, which is pretty... Uh, Ooh, it's pretty bad. And um, my opponent was just able to set up the sport to get to that excess code talker. He has the griffin on his field as well with the brave token monsters. And uh, he did leak off the brave token. He went into the, uh, sorry, I'm going all over the place here, but he went into the nightmare unicorn, didn't activate the effect of it. He linked off the brave token to go into the uh, leak spider. Then he linked off uh, unicorn and spider into the access code talker, use access code talker's effect to gain 3000 attack points. Then he'd use the access code talker to destroy my sunrise as well as my DPE. And then from there, I activated DPE's effect, special summon from the graveyard. And uh, he goes into the uh, battle phase. He destroys my cross crusader with his griffin. And I take a massive 5,300 points of damage from that access code talker then when it became uh main phase two he leaves off both of his monsters goes into the dark charmer monster link monster and just special summons out my dpe from the graveyard to his field and i'm like <laughs> bro and yeah that was just not that good and then when it became my turn i already did use the effect of my uh my destiny hero uh destroyer fiend enforcer so all i could do was special summon out the celestial from my graveyard and was really cool because I was able to activate super polymerization using DPE as well as the, the Celestial I had on my field to go into Destiny Hero Dangerous. I didn't go to Destiny Hero Dystopia. I don't know why I didn't do that, uh, but yeah. And then just from there, I was just able to have the uh, Dust of Gold in my hand. I was able to discard it, 
uh, or no, I already had it, I think, in my hand or something like that. So I was able to go out into the Malicious Bane. I used Malicious Bane to destroy his uh, Dark Charmer. He got the search. I believe he searched out Sangin. And then from there, I just attacked directly with both my monsters. And then from there, he just proceeded to scoop because he really know how much damage I was going to do. And um, I don't think he had anything else to quite play after that. I think he only had Sangin. So uh, from there, I just got uh, game two. So it puts our score at one of one for uh, the uh, round. And so we're going on to game three. We go into game three and my opponent goes first. He's setting up his board. He has uh, the, uh, he goes to the Chirpini with his level two monsters. And then he goes into the Brave Engine and as well as coming out the Griffin onto his field. Then he goes into the Artifact site, uh, Lancia, I'm sorry, the Artifact Dagda, my apologies. And then from when he summons that monster, I decide to drop in the Nibiru. My opponent activates his Griffin. However, I have the infinite impermanence in my hand to negate that Griffin and was able to tribute out his monsters to summon out the token to his field and my monster in attack position. And my opponent actually does something really cool. He activates the uh, Draco back uh, equipped spell card. I can't remember that's the name of it. And he activates his effect to bounce my Nibiru back to my hand. And I thought that was just funny as heck. I, that was actually a really cool smart play. I really did like that. So mad respects to him. So then when it became my turn, I opened up with the Fusion Destiny. I go into my DPE. And then from there, I was sent out the Malicious and the Denier to the graveyard. And then I was just able to summon out the whole, uh, go into the same usual place of summoning out those two to the grave and uh, summoning out the Cross Crusader, using Cross Crusader's effect to summon out Mali, uh, tributing Mali to get a search. I believe I searched out uh, a Dusted Gold, I think. It was either a Dusted Gold or Bion. And then... Um, from there, my uh, I was you know I recycled the uh, denier uh, with denier's effect. I recycled the Mali and back into my deck, and then um, it was actually pretty cool because uh, when I was going off of my plays a little bit, I didn't know how I was going to do this. And then um, when I was trying to go into my plays, try to set up a board, the time went off, and uh, that was like it for the round. However, we were still in the uh, main phase one, and I had a way of burning my opponent because I had the dystopia still in my extra deck. And from there, I summoned out the Bion, I banish it, Elements Hero from my grip or a hero for my graveyard, search out the polymerization, activate the polymerization, fusing my DPE with the malicious that I actually special summoned from the deck. I fuse those two together to summon out Dystopia. I use its effect to target out my denier in my graveyard to burn my opponent for 1100 points of damage. However, he had the fog blade, but I had the mass change uh, chaining onto his effect. So I was able to summon out Dark Law and still get the burn, giving me the win for round three. And oh, that was like the most eventful. Uh, I think the most eventful uh, round of the tournament for me. That was just really cool. It's so intense. Like we were on game three, we're going back and forth here a little bit. And I was just like, <laughs> I was able to get that. I just had that like adrenaline a little bit, you know, like whole, I, this, so I didn't know how I was going to survive this one, but it was awesome. I was able to get the win and I just really did like this game and it was really cool. And uh, yeah, that brought our record to 2-1 going into round four. <laughs> It is round four and we are playing against Virtual Worlds. Now I have not played against Virtual Worlds in quite some time. So I was like getting a little bit more familiar with the deck. I was like, okay, cool. And then I just never saw it again. And then now it's like seeing it here and there. It's like one of those rare decks you kind of see at local sometimes. So uh, I kind of knew some things to going into it, but my opponent just goes off. He goes into the, like, the Ultima Zio, the Ultimaya Zulkin, and he was able to go into the Crystal Wing Secret Dragon. And I think he had Bamboo. Yeah, he summoned out Bamboozle as well. I was just like, okay, this is going to be a, uh, this is going to be tough. So when I draw, I actually had Sales Ban in my hand. So I activated Sales Ban to call his Crystal Wing Secret Dragon. So he cannot be able to use the effect of that card for this turn. And I just can't use it for the rest of the duel. No worries there. And I summoned out my Elemental Stratos and I got the search for Honest Neos. And I was an idiot on this part. I destroyed his Bamboozle. I, I destroyed a Bamboozle when I could have destroyed the Synchro Wing Crystal Dragon. Like its effects are negated. I could have destroyed it. Boosted it up with the Honest Neos. That was a huge misplay on my part. And I had to live with it. Because when it became his turn, he, I believe he just went off. I think he summoned off the uh, Virtual World Shin Shin. And uh, yeah, yeah, I just really did not have much. And uh, just like as, the, as the, it went on, I had absolutely nothing in my hand. All I had was monsters. Like no spells, no traps. I, I don't even run traps actually. But just a bunch of spells that could help me, you know. And I lost. I, I lost pretty... pretty uh, 
I just lost, so let's just go with that, okay? And then uh, when we went into game two, I cited in a majority of my side deck. I cited in, I think, like 11 out of the 15 cards that I have in there. I was like, I don't know what to hit here, so I just uh, cited in a bunch of cards. And I cited in like the D barriers, which I did open up with because I went first. Now I summoned out the uh, Hero Sunrise as well as the Cross Crusader. I did not go to my Dread Decimator because I only have one copy of Dread Decimator and I don't want anything to happen to that early in the game. And then I also went into DPE. Then I set three cards face down, one of them being the D barrier. And then I proceeded to pass. My opponent goes and he declares battle phase. And at that point I'm like, it was at this moment, you knew. Uh, yeah, you, you get the rest. But uh, I knew it was coming. He activated the evenly match. I chained the, the D barrier, or I activated D barrier at the start of the battle phase or something like that, I, I really don't remember. And I called Synchro Monsters because I don't want my opponent to go into Synchros. And I was just able to uh, shut off his Synchro plays. So I banished everything except my DPE. And then from there, I, uh, yeah, I really, really couldn't do too much. I think I activated DPE's effect to destroy one of his uh, virtual world cards that I think he proceeded to pass. I think he went into Bamboozle or something. I, I really can't remember. But um, yeah, that, that happened. And I lost the majority of my board. So that sucked. And then uh, when it became my turn, I had the Miracle Fusion. So I activated Miracle Fusion to summon out my Absolute Zero. Now, I did banish the uh, Liquid Soldier and something else. So I was able to draw two cards and discard one. And unfortunately, Bamboozling had 2,600 defense points. And my monsters were all stuck at 25. DPE only reduces attack points. So I actually had to use Honest Neos in my hand so to get over his card, which was like, bad. this was this is kind of like, you know your back's against the wall when you have to activate Honest Neos to get rid of his cards. But I think I had a possible OTK play that I didn't see because we talked about it later after the uh, round was over. And uh, I could have possibly won if I had summoned another hero monster. But uh, anyways, uh, I just went into, I did these hacks, and that was it. And then I proceeded to pass, and my opponent was just kind of going off. I think I activated DPE's effect to destroy his virtual world spell. I think it was the one that negates monster effects, so the continuous spell card. And then my opponent has the spell that activates one from the deck. So he activates the trap card that will destroy my absolute zero. And because I, he had no monsters, absolute zero's effect just activates and nothing gets destroyed. And from there, my opponent proceeds to just like beat me down and he got the win and he got it. So he got round two and my record ended up being two and two for the day for back to duel. And <laughs> it was a it was a rough one, mostly because I was not expecting virtual worlds, but I was not really like well equipped with the whole evenly match. And that card wrecked me, <laughs> that card wrecked me pretty badly. So it is what it is. We always can't win, but we did get into the prizing for the back to duel and uh, it was a it was a pretty interesting prizes. Jose Ayala. Jose Ayala. Donde esta? Hello. Did nobody else come? Aquí. I don't know. I guess it's What is it? What is it? Oh, that's my drink. Oh, that was cool. Oh, true. Third place. Good guess, man. This thing was easy. Fourth place, we got the one. Right there. Should I say that for the last? No, what is it? Oh, okay. Never mind. Damn! I know, right? Thank you. I don't know. I'm not psychic. I do have a weapon. That's cool, though. That was cool. Logan! Did the Multi Brothers take off? Logan? I don't know who Logan is. Never heard of him. Except Hugh Jackman. Alright. Alright. Crew. Yes. <laughs> the nice one. Oh, that Yeah, random prizes. 
Lorenzo. Lorenzo. Lorenzo went to go get Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Darwin! Don't matter. Oh. Get a, you get a banner. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> all of the water individual. Four packs. Oh, oh. This is all the water. Yeah. I just missed some of the extra Wait. Oh! <laughs> I was one. I'm glad I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. See you all again at 3.30 if you're playing in the next one. Otherwise, we will see you guys next Saturday. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah, so I got the uh, random play map, which is the Back to Duel, which is the uh, live twin monsters. I was not expected to win this, mostly because what was hilarious was that before he was going to announce this one, he was saying, we're going to go with this one first because a lot of people want to uh, win this mat. And I said, uh, no, let's save that for last, you know? So he goes in and then he just calls my name. And I was like, oh, never mind, I'll take it. <laughs> you know, like, uh, he, you know, we were doing it anyway. So it was cool. And it was just like, we were laughing about that too. And it was like, hey, you wanted to save it to last. I was like, I know, huh? But uh, it was really cool. And it's a nice mat. I don't know if I'm going to keep this one though. But uh, who knows, it's a really cool map too. I like the colors. But it was a really uh, fun tournament. I really liked it. My deck uh, was good. The salesman, I might move them to the side deck. Mostly because uh, some matches it may be dead to me. I can't really use it too much. And I just called Nibiru a lot. So that way I don't get Nibiru because I'm not playing it in the main deck. I do side deck it, but I don't main deck it. So it's like conflicting as well. It's like, do I add in the Nibiru's? Because if I side deck the sales bands and Nibiru's, I, I had two dead cards in my deck, you know, so I can't use them. But um, yeah, it, it was a fun matchup. I was able, I didn't even go to my birthday in the condo. I thought that was hilarious because I was like, Make it this deck so I can have two hero monsters on my field in case I need to go into Berte and the condo. Like I added the Solid Soldier and then, you know, you use Ferris so you just don't use the effect to place the increase from the deck because then you are locked to heroes for the rest of the turn. I did not go into Berte and the condo, so it was uh, no problem whatsoever, but it was a fun match nonetheless and a very fun day. Now this was tournament one. We did go to the second tournament and I will be filming that one and I'll get it all edited. And I did have to uh, re-record this parts because it was actually very windy outside and watching the video it was horrible the audio was bad you could really hear the wind and you just can't hear me so I had to re-record the segment so uh, I do apologize for that I really did like it better when I was recording over there just because it was like fresh off my mind you know what that what that happened and uh, yeah uh, but I, I will say uh, that the second tournament was pretty interesting especially with one certain match but we'll talk about that one when we actually get to that video so thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate it if you did enjoy this video please hit the like button be sure to subscribe to the channel for more upcoming videos and i uh, will see you guys on the next one which will be the second tournament of the day and uh i am really excited for you guys to watch that one so thank you guys again and i'll see you all in the next video